Hi and uh, welcome to the third blog for January uh, 2011. I'm going to start by saying sorry. I did say that I would add a vidcast to our RSC TV loop as and when they were produced. Uh, I really don't know why, but the last three I didn't add. Well, while I'm recording this, I can tell you that I have corrected my error and it uh, is in the TV loop of vidcast that at the moment lasts for about 1 hour 48 minutes. Um, once this vidcast has been produced and it's online, the um, addition of it to the TV loop will be reasonably quick, I promise. Uh, I'm going to start today uh, the posterous blog's been up all the time. But, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start today by looking at the Os Office for Disability Issues. Now, although it's aimed at government communicators, policy makers, etc., the documents provide excellent advice for learning providers. In particular, the page that I'm on at the moment, which is guidance for communicators, um, it includes a number of different resources, as you can see here, who benefits from inclusive communications, advice on producing inclusive communications, but it's the resources. You'll notice that there is a PDF on delivering inclusive communications, an image library and an accessible media player. In this explore section down the bottom here, um, it includes uh, representing disabled people positively, uh, developing inclusive um, communications, the language of disability, inclusive digital communication, alternative formats involving disabled people, introducing policy making, disability facts and figures and the social model of disability. Um, so that's one section I think you'll find useful. The second section is the inclusive policy making where it covers what is it uh, and how the Office of Disability Issues can support policy makers. Now that's government offices so it doesn't apply to you perhaps but there are some resources like uh, a PDF on delivering inclusive policy and the uh, explore section again has got links to disability facts and figures, disabled people and equality legislation involving disabled people, contact um, the office for disability uh, information for help, don't think that one would apply either and there's a publications index. If you want to find out more go to their home page the links to the two that I've said are down at the bottom here and I'm pretty sure you'll find things that are going to be very useful. The next find is uh, a YouTube video from the BSI documentary Web Accessibility. It was played on the World Standards Day on the 14th of October 2010. It's got um, strong and interesting statements from many authoritative um, contributors. Uh, the film producer Sophie Sandal said, people have different needs and abilities. In this video we want to give them a voice to make sure that their needs are heard and fulfilled um, thanks to standards. And I'll just click a quick play so you can listen to it. I'll just check it. you can hear it. Okay, I'm going to stop it there. Um, it's a video that's well worth looking at and hopefully you'll find it useful. The next find is uh, on Stanford's law school site. It's a Disney parody explanation of copyright law and fair use synopsis. Uh, Professor Eric Faden of Buckley University provides humorous yet informative review of copyright 
principles delivered through the words of the very folk that we can thank for nearly endless copyright terms. The video is found on the link at the top of the page, but you can also play it in YouTube. And again, I'll click and play it for you. I'll see that uh, I think you'll find it interesting. Okay, that, that gives you a, a sort of a, a, an overview of the sort of things that are in there. It's very cleverly done, and as I said at the beginning, it is something that has been uh, produced by uh, Sanford Law School, uh, and well worth a look. The next find is a, a news update, and it's more specific here in the northwest of the UK, but it's on the sort of sustainability green issues. The latest news here from the Energy Saving Trust is that Lancashire rivers are being assessed for green electricity future. Um, I suggest that those of you who live in the North West might find it a useful uh, site to go. The link again is at the top of the page and you can read the full article. Find number five, visible tweets. Uh, I think that this is something that could be used in particular within a classroom situation, at conferences, at workshops, perhaps even in public spaces within learning providers. It's designed for display in public spaces. All you need to do is to enter tweets that you want to visualize um, using the uh, Twitter search operators and if you're not sure what they are I'll just click on it and go to it uh, address at the top of the page but basically uh, this page goes through all of the operators that you can actually use um, with the visible tweet software that I had earlier on let's just go back to that let's for example um, do um, Let's just do myself A C L John. If I click go now, what will happen is that tweets will start loading. Hopefully, here we go. That's from Paul Richardson thanking me for some um, graphics that I, I sent earlier. I'm just wondering whether this is the sensible way to do this. Yeah, those are some links. Now, you've got a choice at the top of the page under animation to choose rotation, for example. I'll show you this one. It's a different format. Notice how the colors of the background changes as it rotates, but different tweets are coming in. If you've got an event and you agreed on the same hash code, this could just be all of the comments being made by delegates at your conference, etc., the third one in the animation options is a tag cloud and again I think this is quite clever you will actually find that um, it produces a cloud after each of the tweets that comes up and you'll notice here here comes a tweet it'll choose some of the words from within that and then it will go into the cloud. There's the cloud with all of the different ones. The bigger the name, obviously, the more often the text has been used. It's a very nice way of communicating. I know when I've shown it to other people, the one they like the most is this one, which comes in and spins round and so on. Okay, next fine. Let's just uh, move on. Um, not that one, this one. It's from FE News, and again, I think it's uh, current and up to date. It's an article that is called Educators Must Develop Activities That Require 21st Century Skills, says who? Microsoft. Um, more educators need to develop learning activities that require 21st century skills, according to the result of a new survey. Uh, Anivity 
Teaching and Learning, IETL, research, which was sponsored by Microsoft's Partners in Learning program, found that although the skills that students need for modern work life are found in schools, students are rarely able to take them on board in practice. You can read the full article following the link at the top of the page. Um, right, the next uh, find, he says, let's just scroll across, and the last find is the noun project. Um, the, the address is at the top of the page. It is sharing, celebrating and enhancing the world's visual language. As we're aware in our travels, certain symbols and signs are universal and communicate the same meaning especially when we're traveling abroad, where we will understand billboards and signs through the symbols that they have on them. Many learning providers have learners whose first language isn't English. The use of appropriate symbols can enhance their understanding. To access and download such symbols and use them in any project, just go to the noun project, which is on your screen at the moment. It's free, it's simple to use, and provides users with universal symbols. Learning providers can use the symbols in signs for their projects to communicate messages to people of all languages. People who speak a foreign language might not understand the text on your signage, but these symbols will help do the job. It's got uh, a large collection of useful and easily understandable symbols and if you hover a mouse over them, for example this one, it comes up with the suggestion that it could be used in a waiting room and that one is in a bar or cocktails or even for martini. That one is a locker, uh, this one a restaurant and so on. If you click on any of the symbols, let's just uh, choose a, a fairly sensible one, a uh, shower there. If you click on the symbol, then you'll notice that the uh, image is enlarged. You could copy that if you wish, um, or you can download it. Be warned though that it downloads a zip file with scalable vector graphic format, that's SVG, which is fine if you're going to use web pages and the like, but not quite as easy when you want to use it in uh, printed documents and uh, similar. Um, they are all licensed under public domain, Creative Commons, uh, and there are loads. Let me just click on to show you one or two more. They should load in. Here we go. And there are a whole lot. We're not going to get many moose in the UK, especially not running loose, should we say. Um, but there are various ones, you know, telephone, there are various ones for those, electricity, uh, wheelchair accessible, the euro, which is a useful sign. Um, it's asking me for an email update if we need it. Uh, and so on. And you'll see that there are dozens. There's a, a lighthouse there's a snake warning, a viewpoint, uh, drinking water, and so on. Okay, um, finish up uh, on the um, a reminder just to let you know that you shouldn't miss our in touch live broadcast, which is from twelve forty five to. Uh, 115 on the second Monday of each month. The next broadcast happens to fall on Valentine's Day and I'm hoping that we're going to do something a little bit special on that day involving more of the team. So hopefully see you on the 14th of February 2011 um, to join us on our In Touch Live broadcast. That's all for today.